Okay, <clears throat> first off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, um, the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, the transmitting masters, and everyone here uh, to uh, have this opportunity to talk about today's topic, uh, the masters of Tao. Uh, the masters of Tao, uh, this is kind of like d introducing the uh, the pa yeah, basically talking about the patriarchs of Tao, <coughs> the patriarchs of Tao, um, and and something that we call this mandate. Uh, the mandate, is something that's important. That's kind of what distinguishes us or this Tao uh, from other. Uh, you, you can say from religions. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're talking about here is <laughs> something called this mandate of heaven. Uh, so what is a mandate? Mandate is an authority um, or a decree. Decree is kind of like an order uh, or, or you can say the will. So in this case, the will of heaven, right? Um, basically, <clears throat> so so this mandate, obviously, it's, it's something that you can't really see. Uh, it, it's, um, it, <laughs> you know, uh, we don't necessarily know who has this mandate. Uh, in the ancient times, uh, for example, <clears throat> if the emperor or the king, uh, you know, assigned like gave a gave an order, a decree, to for an official, someone, you know, to to go do something, uh, there is usually be like a seal. Okay, this this physical uh, piece of the something. <laughs> this is called a seal uh, that. Um, uh, whoever the holder is would, you know, they basically they have this authority given by the king or emperor um, to to go carry out an order, uh, and so so if they had that, then you knew that they had the, uh, they they had that mandate. Okay, so they were authorized to carry out the order. Uh, now, so of course, in in the uh, when we're talking about in, the, in this Tao, this mandate of heaven, uh, it's not always apparent. Uh, who has that mandate? Okay, so or, or yeah, and so uh, the other thing is, you know, what 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 is this mandate about? Um, so in this case, what we're talking about is the passing on of uh, you can say the transmission of the Tao. Okay, so um, but you know, there, there's a purpose. There's a purpose to this, obviously. Okay, so it's not just you know having this for the sake of having it. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, and then, so it's also pat. Whoops, sorry. It's passed on by uh, a master. Okay, so one the person who has that mandate uh, then can can designate uh, someone else. Uh, you know, a su successor, someone who um, then can basically pass the mandate to to an another person. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> okay so uh but so this uh right so and usually so basically it's passed from above so obviously so the master you now the person is already master then he passes on to the person who's not yet the master and then they receive this mandate uh so it, it, and it's passed down from above in this case it's it's coming from heaven now that first person having that mandate you know, how did they get it? I mean, we can't really answer that question. <laughs> okay, so, um, but, uh, you know, maybe they're just born with it, right? Um, and in our case, in the case that what we're talking about, this, this mandate of the Tao, right? Uh, it's basically the mind-to-mind -mind transmission, okay? And, and you'll see the term mind seal in, in the Buddhism, in uh, their literature, you, you, you'll see them refer to something called a mind seal. And it's basically what this is, this, this passing on of this, this mandate. Uh, in this case, you know, we're talking about, uh, okay, well, there are actually different types of mandates. Okay, so, um, but, um, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that, but it's in, in, you know, in one sense, one thing we're talking about is like the patriarchs. Okay, so, so that's the patriarchal mandate. So they're just uh, passing on this 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 Tao, if you will, this 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 true Dharma, um, uh, this mind seal, and uh, they're kind of keeping. It's kind of like keeping the flame alive, right? Passing the torch, 
uh, to the next person. Uh, now, you know, they, they may not know, I mean, they may not know what the ultimate purpose, ultimate goal is, okay? So, uh, you know, who, you know, when it's gonna end, things like that. Uh, but, you know, they just do their part. So once they get this mandate, you know, they kind of know that they're supposed to keep the mandate and not, not, not keep it to themselves. I mean, they're gonna have to pass it on eventually, okay? Uh, or they will know that that's the it's the last, okay? That there there's no more to pass it on to. Uh, and also, um, you know, while they have this mandate, still they're also, of course, teaching the Dharma too, okay? Um, so they're not just holding on to it, and not doing anything, and just waiting for the person for the successor to show up, right? So they're they're also teaching, um, okay? So they're, they're that's why they're also the masters, and then they they, they teach uh, the Dharma as well. And okay, so uh, now, so this is obviously this type of mandate is different from um, what we know of as mandates in in the in society in the world that we know today, right? Uh, you know, <clears throat> we talk about popular mandates, right? So that's that's basically mandates given by the people um, to, let's say, a president to to carry out you know their duties, right? So that's. That's kind of the opposite of what um, I, what I was saying earlier is that it's, this mandate is coming from above, from heaven, uh, coming down, or from a master down to another person who will become the next master, um, or or in the case of like uh, receiving the Tao, right? So we have transmitting masters, and they can uh, transmit us the Tao, the three treasures, uh, and so that is you know because they are basically uh, they have a a different type of mandate, which is to transmit <laughs> that Tao, right? Okay, but it's still from above to from the top down. Whereas the the mandates today that we are familiar with are from the bottom up. <laughs> so it's from you know. So even like in religion, uh, or especially like well, it, you know, like in um, I guess in Catholicism, you know, you have the Pope. Okay, so the Pope, how did you know? The Pope get his mandate again. It's 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 a popular mandate. It's not heaven's mandate, because why he's elected by uh, a bunch of cardinals. Okay, so the cardinals obviously they're below the Pope, the the position of a Pope, and yet you have these uh, cardinals. Then they elect someone among them to become the Pope. So they elevate that person's uh, position. Uh, so so that's different. So that's that. Uh, so right there, you can see already it's it's the Tao <coughs> is different from uh, religion in this sense too. Uh, that this mandate is is different, and this so the mandate that we have uh, today, you know, um, and we'll we'll go through the kind of the history. Uh, it goes, you know, from, started from thousands of years ago. Okay. Um, right. So okay. So again, this mandate is for the transmission of the Tao, the true Dharma. Basically, it's a wordless Dharma that's transmitted by the masters having the mandate. So it's this mind to mind transmission, of the the or the mind seal. <clears throat> okay. So, and who they they transmit this or uh, pass on this mandate to, uh, the person receiving it has to be qualified. So obviously, it's not just give it to anyone. Uh, they have to be <clears throat> either enlightened. You know, or very close to being enlightened, or and or they have to be very virtuous. Okay, so uh, and then we'll see that uh, in the beginning, though, in the beginning of this uh, uh, in of this this whole lineage, if you will, the heritage that's passing out of the mandate in the very beginning. Um, it, it's probably, I mean, it, it, it's it goes through different phases. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, okay, so. Now, also the mandate uh, in this case, in you know, when we're talking about this Tao mandate, uh, is not always passed on directly from one patriarch uh, to the successor. Okay, so from from a historical perspective, right? From a human perspective, we see that there could be gaps. Uh, you know, it could be hundreds of years between like one patriarch and the next. So obviously, uh, you know, one patriarch did not. If they didn't meet, okay, then it didn't didn't really pass on that mandate directly to the next one. Uh, but this 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 happens sometimes in history. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the the there's you know the mandate disappeared. Um, 
it sometimes the mandate goes into kind of like a hidden becomes hidden okay uh and then it reappears later on and uh when the you know when the time is right i guess uh so so a lot of it also has to do with what's going on in the world okay what's happening in the, in the world um okay and then the other thing is there will be there w is a limit to the number of uh you know who who has the mandate okay so so in this case we're uh we're initially we're talking about this particular mandate which is like this patriarch mandate okay and there's going to be you know it's not going to go on it doesn't go on forever okay so there, there's a limit to the number of patriarchs or number of you know generations of patriarchs uh, that will have this mandate and the other thing is you know there's a there could be a time limit to you know how long th the mandate gets passed on right so so that's something important to keep in mind as well um so you know <clears throat> in uh, we can't again this 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 mandate of heaven is not something that we as humans uh using our you know normal the way we would uh view things as being um uh you know we say oh it has to be an unbroken link right unbroken chain uh from one that's directly passing it to the next um and that that the mandate has will exist so in some like in in i i heard i heard an argument uh I, or, or explanation given by uh this buddhist um you know dharma master and he's saying well you know this 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 dao this iguan dao they they claim that they have this lineage but then it's you know it's full of holes he says you know it's like there's all these gaps uh so they cannot claim that it's like oh uh, how how does it connect from one patriarch to the next? You know, so uh, so I'm surprised that he said that. But uh, you know, this this heaven's mandate is not a human mandate. Okay, and a human mandate, yeah, you would definitely need to pass it on from one to the next. So so that's something also that's a little bit different. So we can't always use the way we view things uh, to to try to analyze this. Okay. All right. Uh, whoops. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay, so finally, the, um, uh, the, so this, what we call this lineage of uh, masters or the patriarchs is, uh, you can say this gold, uh, it's one golden thread, okay, so the, uh, there, there are other ways to talk about golden, different golden threads, but this one golden thread, which is like that link uh, with this Tao um, all the way from the beginning to, to now, okay. Um, Okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. All right. So, uh, so this is a chart uh, or a diagram that you've probably seen before. Um, it's the Yenhui cycle theory. Okay, for for the world. Okay. So this is something. Oh. Let's see, I think I'm missing something here. Uh, oh, okay, there. Uh, okay, so um, this is actually developed by a Neo-Confucianist, um, you know, uh, that he devised this theory of the, the cycles of, you know, of the world, you could say. Okay, so, so basically, uh, you know, th this one cycle is 129,600 years, and if you divide it by 12, it's like a clock. Okay, so you divide by 12, you have 10,800 years for each, you know, uh, segment. Um, and uh, each of those you can divide in by 30 to get 360 years, which is, you know, roughly, I guess they say it's like, a, <laughs> you know, maybe the length of like a dynasty or something like that. And then <clears throat> divide that by 12 and you get 30 years, which is basically the, the length of one generation. Okay, so... So that that's kind of how um, this guy, you know, uh, came up with this kind of theory. Okay, so uh, uh, now according to this theory, then the uh, at the bottom, the beginning is at the bottom. Okay, the six o'clock position, uh, where basically uh, you have start of creation. Creation, you know, however that's I, I don't mean like the biblical sense of creation necessarily, but it's just you know creation. So you have the heavens, the earth, and then humans appearing. Okay, so around the eight o'clock position, uh, 
up until right now we are past we are at the, at the one o'clock position here okay so we are already past the noon the the peak if you will so this is the there's a yin yang right this this diagram here <coughs> and so we are past the peak already um <coughs> now the humans right so humans have been around for roughly 50 uh over 50,000 years so it's one two three four five yeah uh at least five of these segments so uh it's over 50,000 54,000 years uh something like that now um now the the part where we have actually have this mandate um that's being passed um that we have the patriarchs starts from uh sometime like in you know between 12 and 1 okay so what we call, what's indicated by the green the green period that's the green era and then the red era and then the white era okay so so we're at the beginning of the white um and so so the patriarchs basically have been most of the patriarchs have been in the green and the red okay uh before that there was no uh, there were no patriarchs uh there was no you can say there was no need for patriarchs um the doubt i mean the humans uh for the past you know 50,000 years or so uh they've been or, or uh, i should say before the green period uh you know they they were pretty pretty much they, they, although they were primitive uh but they were pure okay so they were pure of heart you can say and and so there was really no need um well the other i mean the, i guess the other aspect is that without without like language um you know and uh being able to to understand certain concepts it's very it might be difficult to try to like teach <laughs> you know to talk about uh these principles okay um that that might be a, another factor but <clears throat> uh now it's also said that there are you know 10 buddhas in each cycle so in this cycle uh during the early time period um before like 12 you know before the green period uh basically there were seven buddhas who were kind of managing the world and you know teaching teaching humans basic stuff about survival okay uh living in this world and then uh and then there are three more buddhas after that so those are the buddhas for each of the green the red and the white periods the white years okay so uh and so all right so we'll talk about that and those uh, those we call there's this thing called this heavenly uh, heavenly post and those are the buddhas that are kind of basically in charge of the sentient beings uh, during that time period okay um, all right okay so that that's kind of give you an idea of where we are and basically well you can see that after the white uh, at the two o'clock after the two o'clock position it says destruction okay so um, you know humans will be gone first and then the earth and heavens and finally go into chaos and then and then the whole cycle starts over again uh but don't view this as being something that uh you know you're trying to match this to what science can tell us about this the earth uh it, it, you you might not get the answer that you want okay so so just uh this is kind of uh this may not necessarily and and the other thing is that maybe the timing may not necessarily always be it won't necessarily be exactly this long okay uh so but anyway so this is this kind of a general uh view of of life the life cycle if you will okay um but yeah so so basically after the white period um you know then that's it's over so so basically uh we have although the white period is long i mean it's supposed to be this 10,800 years right um but um but actually the Tao, right the Tao that we have today that, that that we're propagating the Tao, people can receive the Tao, is will only be won't be available for that whole time i mean it's it's well, well you'll see because well you the the <laughs> we we're running out of the mandate basically okay so we'll, we'll talk about that all right so now um let's talk about the green era then um, so the green era, the time frame is roughly starting, you know, 3000 BCE until about 1000 BC. Now, typically, you know, they, they say it's like around 1500 years, but it's hard to say exactly because this is before recorded history, right? Even though they, they're civilization, but 
Uh, and there is even, you know, they have language, maybe even some written language, but it's, there's, uh, they haven't found anything because uh, uh, basically, you know, the things, you know, they may have, ri I, whatever they wrote, uh, you know, recorded things on was not, uh, you know, was either destroyed or whatever. It, you know, can't be, they haven't found anything that shows you know, recorded uh, writings during that time period. Okay, so, um, but, uh, or at least for part of it. Okay, so, so, um, so who has this, during this green era, who has this mandate? It's basically what we call the sage kings. Um, these are the benevolent emperors and kings. Uh, and so they, they had, uh, back then, you know, you hear this term, divine authority. Okay, they had, it's like, they were closest to heaven, or they were the son of heaven. Okay, and that they they therefore had this authority from heaven. It was given to them directly. Okay, so um, so in this case, um, that's almost true in that they uh, these kings or emperors didn't necessarily pass on the mandate directly to to the next one. Okay, uh, it's 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 in this case it's like they're almost like born with it. Okay, um, now so <clears throat> I mentioned that heavenly post. Uh, the, the Buddha who's kind of in charge overall of, of that the world during this time of you know make trying to uh, make sure that the the ascension beings in this world during that time um, maybe that they can have a chance or well uh, to to I, I, I don't know that the, the anyways there's there's always this Buddha in charge okay so in this case this Dipangara Buddha um, this is not a Buddha from this cycle. Okay, so so obviously, uh, we we don't know of, uh, well, yeah, historically we don't know of any other Buddha other than uh, Sakamoni Buddha. Okay, so but so Divankar Buddha was a Buddha from previous cycles. Okay, he's already a Buddha, and so he so he's he's got this heavenly post during this this Greek period. Um, the other thing about these green years, th these different time frames is that there's also calamities um, during that time and it's also flooding. So remember, humans have already, you can say they've become evil already uh, and, and during this green area, even though it's very early. Uh, um, but, you know, there's already, humans uh, create lots of karma and, you know, killing and whatnot. And so uh, there's, obviously they're reincarnating uh, uh, and, and so, but, but because of what, humans are doing uh there's there there's gonna be dis disasters calamities and disasters okay um okay so so but during this time um the this mandate was with the kings and, and the rulers okay because why they, i mean they were they were benevolent for the most part okay so uh at least in the very beginning all right we'll, we'll see that uh and uh okay so Let's see. All right. So let's, so these are the first, these first eight um, of the in the green era. Okay. There's there's more. There's like thirteen. Uh, but these are also known as okay. So this obviously this starts in China. Okay. So Fuxi Si. Um, the first three are, well, actually, you can say that the first uh, six, seven. Well, actually, all all eight of these pretty much are very. Le they're they're all legendary. Okay, these are all legendary. Like I said, there's not much written record um, of that of that's you know can be dated to those times. Um, there are you know historians later on who wrote about them. So per perhaps there's a lot of history that was being passed down orally uh, and then finally gets written down, uh, but. Uh, these are, you can say, these are pre-history in terms of, uh, you know, not, they don't have, they haven't left behind a, a historical record, okay. But, okay, so, but these are also known as, in, in, in Chinese history uh, and culture, uh, as the five, uh, or sorry, the three sovereigns and the five um, emperors, okay. So, so these are very well known. Uh, the, the first three are the three sovereigns. What are called three sovereigns. So yeah, Fuxi Si, and then Sun Nong, which is also known as the Red Emperor, and then Shen Yan, also known as the Yellow Emperor. Okay, 
uh, and then actually the next three, um, Sao Hao, uh, Zhuan Xi, and then Di Ku, um, these three are actually direct descendants of the Yellow Emperor. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now, but but there's still no there's no such thing as a dynasty then because this you know you have to realize this is very early and there's uh, the kingdoms are very small. Okay, and then you have Di Yao. Okay, so the Sage King Yao, and then Di Sun, uh, the Sage King Sun. Okay, so and these are also well known. Uh, Confucius also talks about them as being, uh, you know, they're, they're very uh, virtuous and benevolent in, in their their ruling over the governing of the of the, of the people. Okay. Um, now, uh, let's see. So these are. Yeah, these are actually, so all of these are considered like uh, what you call, what the Chinese would call culture heroes, okay, the heroes of their, the Chinese culture. Um, and okay, so uh, this is roughly, you know, it's hard to say because there, again, there's no record of, you know, how long these people lived or when they were born exactly. And so that's roughly between 3000 and 2200 BCE for these eight. Okay, um, and okay, so uh, in, in uh, let's see, right, okay. Mm. So let's talk about one of the, uh, some of these. Um, Fuxi Si being the first patriarch of Tao. Okay, so he also has what we call this post of Tao transmission or the post of the Tao in, in this green era. Um, now, like today, uh, you know, we have also Jigong Living Buddha uh, having that post today. And so he's responsible for the transmission of Tao being, you know, for us to be able to receive the Tao. The, okay. Um, back then, uh, I don't think there's really much transmission of the Tao like, like we have today <laughs> receiving the Tao because it's a different time period. Okay. So it's basically the kings, the monarchs, they have the Tao with them and they ruled accordingly. And so because of their benevolent and, and virtuous rule uh, that the, the people, you know, under them, the subjects, um, you know, they, <clears throat> there was peace uh, and prosperity. So there was really no need to, like, spread the Tao uh, among, among the people for the most part. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, what's special about this Fu Shi Su is that he's, uh, you know, he discovered the, the, the eight trigrams. Okay, so the Bagua, and um, and legend has it that he saw, I know it's either a turtle <laughs> or this this magical creature uh, that's kind of like a horse, I guess, uh, that he saw on their either you know the back of the turtle or, or the, the on the pelt of the of the, the of the, that mythical creature uh, this the patterns of of these this eight of these eight patterns. Okay, so uh, now, even though, you know, you can say that they're pretty primitive back then, um, uh, but he, he had wisdom. And so they, they were very, very close in touch. Well, obviously, he had this divine wisdom. He, he, he obviously, he was born uh, with this mandate. So, so I'm sure he had to have that divine wisdom. And so he could look at this and understand Wow, what it, what it what it means, and so he came up with the, the the three trigrams and the relationships, and they supposed to kind of describe the relationship uh, of of things. Um, and basically, these are the eight trigrams. Uh, they refer to the what we call the heavenly order, okay, or you know the pri primordial order of things. So this is like from the heavens view of things. Um, later on, uh, another one of the patriarchs, uh, he basically expanded it, the trigrams into the hexagrams that we know today, uh, the, the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching, okay, and so, and he described all of those, and, but those described the, uh, what I would call the earthly order, the, the post-heavenly order, so, um, that described the phenomena in this world, and, you know, all the relationships between, uh, everything in this world, okay. Uh, okay, so, um, right, so, uh, let's see, he was, okay, all right, so that, that's kind of who she is, um, uh, and, you know, again, you know, uh, he probably just, 
was born with this uh, this uh, this mandate. Um, since we don't really, we can't really say, you know, how did he get it? Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, all right. So then the next is uh, Sun Nong, uh, the Red Emperor. Okay, it's the second patriarch now. Now, uh, now whether whether these the two were uh, you know um, whether there was any kind of overlap between the two uh, between Fushisu and Sanon, it's probably it's probably unlikely because um, they the I think the timing is is such that I mean although they they probably lived long they lived uh, I think over a hundred years uh, but. Uh, for actually how long is not clear um, but uh, so they probably they, they may not even have met okay uh, it's hard to say uh, but anyway so he's the, the second of the uh, three sovereigns also known as the farmer or agriculture god or deity okay um, and that's that's his name okay so now he invented farming tools and taught his subjects to farm uh, the other thing is that he's uh, you know, legend has that he he tasted herbs and plants to to kind of and by tasting them he could kind of know what they're they're good for. Okay, so uh, so basically, um, <clears throat> and, uh, so basically he is kind of like the you can say the father of um, traditional Chinese medicine, herbal medicine. Okay, um, that you know he. he he test, tasted all sorts of plants, uh, even poisonous ones. Um, you know, he, and he, that's how he know they're, they're poisonous. Uh, but uh, so, so this is kind of interesting. I mean, the, the I mean, he's he's a king or an emperor, uh, and and so back then, you know, the they they would be the ones who have that wisdom. I mean, if you look at uh, other traditions, like maybe you know, like the, in the what we call the maybe the Christian tradition. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, it's the same. It's pretty similar in that you have these kings, these a succession of kings who <clears throat> who were wise, uh, and the, the and so they prob they you know. Uh, I mean, we're talking about kind of our mandate here. We say our mandate. Uh, they probably had their own uh, mandate <clears throat> um, that they were carrying on uh, over there. But but anyway, so it's it's kind of similar. Um, Okay, so let's see. Yeah, because uh, yeah, so his his time frame is roughly around the twenty seven thirty seven B C E. So uh, Fushi Su is is probably well. Some say it starts around three thousand B C E. So you know that's almost like about three hundred years difference uh, in time. So it's it's hard to say. I don't know. Unless he, he lived very long, it, we, we really don't know. I mean, some people just say that <laughs> he lived very long time, so uh, hundreds of years. But uh, but anyways, all right. Okay. So the next one is uh, the yellow uh, the yellow emperor, which uh, a lot more people are more familiar with. He's third patriarch of Tao. Um, he's credited with teaching people to build shelters, domesticate animals. Inventing carts, boats, and clothing. So he invented a lot of things. And his wife is credited with uh, culturing and weaving silk. Okay. So, um, and he's also credited uh, with inventing like the Chinese calendar um, and also <laughs> this game that's uh, that's a precursor to, you know, like modern day football or soccer actually. Um, and then uh, he's the initiator of Chinese culture, basically, and his doctrines form the basis for the kind of internal medicine. Okay, so so he kind of maybe, uh, yeah, so similar to the Sun Nong, you know, that so he's also um, has something. It's kind of like the founder of the the the, the internal kind of medicine kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, so again, um, now a lot of like I like mentioned earlier, a lot of people claim to be. Or, or kind of descended from the Yellow Emperor, uh, a lot of some of the other patriarchs. Uh, okay, so this is actually the three that follow him. Okay, uh, and then when it came to Yao, so he's the seventh. Uh, the basically he was now Yao is not a direct descendant of the Yellow Emperor. I don't think. Um, yeah. So, well, no, sorry. He 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 was a. A descendant of Yellow Emperor and 
the son of the Emperor Ku, which is the one that came before. Uh, actually, there was someone, there was another king or emperor in between, between Ku, which was the sixth, and between Yao. Okay, so, uh, but um, that one, that emperor Zhu, he, he reigned for like only nine years, and then uh, I think he, he didn't do well, or so, 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 so he was only for nine years. But anyways, uh, so then Yao, Yao kind of took over. Um, but so, so the mandate kind of passed over um, that other one. Uh, so, you know, at that, at that time, you know, it's, we, it's not for us to say, we, it's not for us to say, you know, who, who, who gets this mandate, right? So, um, now he, yeah, uh, so he devised this, this, uh, the, kind of the, the lunar calendar that the Chinese use, um, and, uh, basically, you know, he's then selected instead of, you know, so like the Yellow Emperor, okay, it's kind of his son, his grandson, and then great grandson who kind of took over uh, after him, uh, kind of. But then with Yao, uh, he did not um, pass it on to his son. Now there's, uh, you know, he he found out, or he discovered this person called Sun, which who's, who would be the next emperor. Okay, so he was he found he heard story that he was very filial. Uh, and so uh, he selected him to be the next emperor. Um, in fact, he, he gave his uh, two daughters to, to marry Sun, okay? Uh, and in fact, uh, well, well, Yao actually, he ruled uh, uh, for, uh, let's see, probably like 70, about 70 years, but for the last uh, 28 years, of his rule, he actually shared that with with uh, Sun. So so even though he was still alive, uh, usually the the kings or monarchs they you know the, the 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 throne goes to the next person only after they die. But but in this case, you know he he let uh, Sun uh, kind of start uh, ruling uh, while he was still alive. Uh, okay. So uh, so now also when we receive the Tao. Uh, there's something called, um, uh, well, you know, when we burn that document at the altar, okay, uh, that gets burned, and then it goes up to <laughs> it goes up to heaven. Now these, now Yao, of course, now he's he's in heaven, so he's he's called the minister of heaven. Okay, so so he's one of the three ministers who received that that Long Tian Biao, that that document that we burn at the altar when we receive the Tao. Okay, so, and the other two are, are the next two uh, patriarchs as well. So, uh, let's see here. So, Sun, right? Sage King Sun, the eighth patriarch, uh, he's called the minister of the earth. Okay, uh, now, you know, his stories, you, you know, you can read about uh, one of the, one of the, there's this, this well-known uh, 24 stories of filial piety in, in Chinese, you know, history or, or uh, that, uh, Sun is one of them. Okay, so uh, and because uh, basically he he lost his father when he was young, and I mean his mother, uh, and uh, the father remarried, and uh, the mother-in-law and her kids were very mean. Um, they they actually they tried to kill him. Okay, so so they were not nice to him, um, but yet he was still very filial, and he never complained. You know all that stuff, uh, and so. Um, you know, there's one story about uh, the the mother-in-law. I mean, not the mother-in-law. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, the the stepmother. Sorry, stepmother. Um, uh, telling him that yeah, you go. You have to go. You know, plant the fields uh, and don't come back until you're done. But you know, so but because of his filial piety, you know, he moved. He was able to touch move heaven, and so. Uh, heaven then said, you know, had these animals go help him uh, plant the, the seeds and all that stuff until, you know, uh, so, well, anyways, I mean, this, you can say that this is kind of a legend or myth, um, but, uh, but that's, that's what the story is. Uh, now, now, okay, so remember I said that during the green era, there's flooding, and so starting around this time, there was some major flooding starting to happen, uh, and so, uh, Actually, they started in, in the previous reign of Yao. Okay, so uh, uh, and so Sun uh, 
appointed uh, an official called Yu to, to deal with the floods, right? You worked on the problem for over a decade and you finally succeeded. Actually, the, the previous uh, person uh, uh, under Yao that he appointed to try to fi uh, solve the problem of the floods, you know, couldn't do it. It was actually Yu's father, okay? So, uh, but then, so now it came to Yu, uh, this Yu, who's, who would be the next emperor, um, he, he actually managed to control the flooding, uh, and so, okay, and, and uh, right, okay, so, so basically, uh, Sun then, uh, seeing how, you know, how well Yi had done, and, you know, how hard he worked, and all that, and the fact that Yi didn't even, you know, the story goes that he passed by his, his home, you know, several times during this, uh, basically, I think it's like, uh, I don't know, like, 10 years or so that he was trying to deal with the floods um, and without even visiting his, his you know, family, uh, you know, that, that kind of touched, uh, you know, showing that, wow, what spirit he had, um, that Sun actually made, again, made Yu a co-ruler for 17 years before finally, you know, letting him rule by himself. Um, okay, so, so then, so, okay, so that, those are, uh, and then we go talk about, uh, the, the next, right, so Yi will be next. Um, he's also known as Yi the Great. Uh, and then you have Yi Ying, who, who's, who's a minister, uh, who basically, he's related to the Sang Tang, uh, uh, Sang Tang, who, who basically, uh, he, the Yi Ying helped him to become uh, an emperor or king. And then you have Zhang Tai Gong, basically, and then who helped uh, King Wen, the, the, the 13th, so King Wen, King Wu, Duke of Zhou. Okay, so these are the next in line here. Now, some people, they say, well, uh, the red, the red, or the green era stops, ends here at the number 11, uh, and, it, and the, red, the red starts with number 12 here. Uh, yeah, I mean, some people say that. Uh, it, it's, it's, you could say that there's, you can, there's a transition here, because basically what's happening is, you know, the first nine are emperors, and then now it's kind of getting lower into lesser officials, a lesser noble, nobility, okay? So now we have lesser kings and dukes uh, and other ministers. Um, so, so yeah, there is definitely, uh, it's a transition towards the red uh, that's happening here, okay? But, uh, okay, so, but anyways, I need to start getting going here. Um, so, uh, Yi the Great, okay, he's the ninth patriarch. He's the minister of water, right? He controlled the flooding, uh, and um, okay. So when when it was time that he he wanted to pass the throne on to someone other than his son, right? Because that's what happened with Yao and, and Sun as well. Uh, uh, but the people actually, because they, you know, because he was such a great ruler, uh, they insisted that his son take take the throne, right? So that was. So then this is actually the start of the first official Chinese uh, dynasty, the Xia dynasty, okay? So that's why he's called Xia Yi. So he's, he's the, the start of the Xia dynast dynasty, okay? Um, and so, uh, okay, and then so he's a minister of water, all right. So uh, Xia dynasty, right. Now the Xia dynasty, mm, let's see. There would be a gap again, historical gap between him because he. There were a bunch of emperors after him in the Xia Dynasty until uh, it got to uh, basically. Oh, right. The sorry. There was the Song. Okay, so Song Tang is actually the start of another dynasty, the Song Dynasty. Okay, so between them there was a gap uh, here. Uh, probably a few hundred years, and then uh, there's also going to be another gap between uh, Sang and the next one, which would be the Zhou, Dyn the Zhou Dynasty. Okay, so so again, there 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 are these hundred years, hundreds of years of gap between these. Okay, so but like I said again. The, the mandate is not being passed from one person to the next because these, they have basically divine authority. Uh, they have the mandate, um, you know, the heaven is kind of given them directly. Okay, you can say. All right, so John Taigong, he's uh, basically, 
he, he was like a minister who who helped the the Zhou state who was there, there was a state and then they established uh, they overthrew the Song dynasty okay so again with these with these dynasties um, they start off good <laughs> and then over time they start becoming corrupt okay so so that's why they get overthrown at the end it's like you know people get fed up with them and and or other you know other little states kingdoms um, they get fed up with what's going on and then they'd overthrow the the previous dynasty okay so unfortunately you know it's that that's human nature so um uh and that that happens uh okay so but anyways um the john taikong he's very well known um he's also known as jiang ziya okay <clears throat> and basically you know he taught uh or he advised you know king wen king wu okay um who would be the next uh patriarchs uh, there's also there's also a book, uh, yeah, you can say it's like a novel, but it's a book that's written. It's called the Investiture of the Gods that talks about this time period, okay. Uh, and and it, it's 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 good, but it's very long. Um, but it talks about all of these these people, all right? Okay. So and then King Wen, King Wu, and Duke of Zhou. Okay. So these are, uh, so now this you can say this is the first time they have like three. Um, three patriarchs at the same time. I mean, but they're, it's all one generation. They're all kind of contemporaries. Uh, basically, King Wu is the son of King Wen. Okay, so King Wen is the father, and then King Wu is the son. And then the Duke of Zhou is uh, uh, a son of King Wu. Um, no, wait, sorry, not. Son, it's also a son of, of uh, King Wen. Okay, so, uh, but... They're all, obviously, they're all contemporaries. Now, um, the rule, they didn't, uh, I think King Wen's uh, rule lasted longer, but, and then King, King Wu was shorter, uh, and then you have the Duke of Zhou. So, uh, these, um, let me see. So, King Wen is the one who expanded the original trigrams of, from Fu Shi Si to the hexagrams and the, and the I Ching. Uh, and then he also, okay, so, uh, so this down, basically, this is now around 1000, you know, around 1000 BC, so, uh, and they, basically, they overthrew the, the Song Dynasty, okay, because the Song Dynasty, the last emperor, or the king of the Song Dynasty, he was a tyrant, King Zhou, he's called King Zhou, uh, and, you know, that's also talked about in that, in that book, uh, that story, uh, and so he was very evil, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically very cruel too. Killed a lot of people. But um, so anyway, so King Wu, uh, basically his father King Wen died before the establishment of the Zhou Dynasty, and then so King Wu established the Zhou Dynasty, uh, and the Zhou Dynasty actually lasts around over 800 years. Uh, and so you know, because basically they these were these three, you know, they were like the models of of you know, the model rulers, okay? So they, they were very good, again, virtuous rulers. Uh, and so d during the Zhou Dynasty, they established a lot of, uh, you know, like rites or ceremonies, things like that, rituals, um, that later on, uh, the Confucius, Confucius also actually came, was lived in the time of the Zhou Dynasty, but towards the end of it. And so, <clears throat> but, you know, he always praised them. Uh, and, you know, he would always say, you know, you know, follow the, 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 the rules that were established by, by these kings here. Okay. Um, okay, so, all right, let's continue on. All right, so that is then uh, the end of the, the green era, what we call the green era. Now, there's, again, uh, because that ended around roughly around 1000 BCE. Now, the red era, you can say either starts here or, but if we talk about like Lao Tzu, which would be the next uh, patriarch, uh, you know, there's probably at least uh, around a 500 year gap uh, between uh, the, the previous king and Lao Tzu. Okay, so, so now in the red era though, we, there's a big uh, change in that basically, uh, you know, who has the mandate now is no longer the kings or the monarchs. It's the, the teacher, what we call the teachers. Basically, they're sages or, or they're cultivators, you know, um, they're, they're maybe they're in religion, right? Uh, basically, 
And the Buddha who has the heavenly post is Sakamoni Buddha. Now, it's kind of odd, a little bit odd, because uh, Sakamoni Buddha, uh, well, I, I guess it's not too odd, but but uh, kind of started a little bit, uh, yeah, at, at the beginning of this era. But, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And then the calamities during the time Red Era is, is fire. Okay, so basically warfare, um, you know, the, the discovery of, uh, invention of gunpowder, things like that. So, so that that um, was the major big calamity. And actually, oh, I didn't mention the the Green Era has nine major calamities of flooding, and then uh, in the Red Era it's eight, eighteen. Okay, so um, all right. So in the Red Era, the, the the what I would consider the first because uh, these are like all teachers. Uh, so Lao Tzu is the first one, Confucius. Confucius, now this, so this, there is a direct link between all of these here, right? Confucius did seek, um, you can say, sought, sought the, 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 the true dharma from Lao Tzu, okay? And then uh, the other following three, Ye, uh, Yan Hui, basically, Zhen Zhu, okay, and then Zhu and Mencius, these were all disciples uh, of Confucius, or actually, you know, th these are different de generations, but uh, they all followed from Confucius. Okay, so so uh, you'll also hear that people talk about, we talk about the 18 patriarchs of the East. Okay, these are the first 18. Uh, there will be another 18 afterwards. Okay, and in the middle, there's 28. That's that's basically in, in India, in Buddhism. Okay, so, uh, but anyways, all right. So let's say Lao Tzu, uh, he's regarded as the, you know, the, the author of the Tao Te Ching. Okay, the story goes that he, he was going to leave the, the city um, before he can leave the city gates, the, the guard there, I guess he knew, you know, he uh, Lao Tzu had some reputation as being a philosopher and all that. <clears throat> uh, he he wouldn't let him go unless he, he taught him something. And so that's supposedly where, where he uh, uh, dictated, you know, what the, the Tao Te Ching to him. Okay, so uh, so considered the founder of Taoism, okay, uh, at least the you know the philosophy expounded the principle of Wu Wei, right? The effortless or motiveless action. So this is around 600 BCE. Okay. Um, so again, there's that gap um, around a few hundred years, 400 years almost. Uh, okay. So now it's uh, right. Uh, and then Confucius. Okay, right after him. Uh, again, these they are contemporaries. Uh, and so Confucius, basically, uh, founder of Confucianism, right, regarded as the greatest teacher in Chinese history, right? Um, and his teachings are recorded in one of the four books. Uh, it's called the Analects. Okay, so this is the one that's directly, uh, you know, his teachings are directly, these are the ones that are recorded in this book. Um, the, other, the other three books are written by, in fact, those other three um, who followed him. Okay, so uh, he's known as the... Zhi uh, Sun, I guess you could say the greatest sage or the highest sage. Uh, so he's around 551 BCE, okay. Uh, and then, so, now he, and this is where, you know, you can say they, they appoint the next person. All right, so, so Confucius wanted Yan Hui or Yan Zi to be the, the, his successor. But unfortunately, Yan Hui died when he was only 32. So he died before Confucius died. So, so Confucius had no choice but to, to pick someone else. Sun Tzu. Okay, so, but Yan Wei is known as, uh, the, the returning sage is probably not the, the right, it's Fu, Fu Sun. So, it, he's really <laughs> considered to be like a, a, like a carbon copy of Confucius. I mean, he, he was like uh, that good. Okay, so, uh, so that's why Confucius was very disappointed that, uh, or very, you know, you could say uh, heartbroken also that, that Yan Wei uh, died so young. Uh, and so he had he had no choice but to choose pick another one. Uh, so sometimes you know even though, uh, you know Confucius he's also a, a master and he has this mandate that you know um, who who he wants to be the successor doesn't always work out uh, and this is not <clears throat> you know we, <laughs> it's not something that humans decide. All right. So but Zenzi he's the author of the other one of the other. Uh, four books called The Great Learning, uh, and he's known as the the model sage. Okay, so uh, and then following that, Zhe Si is the uh, grandson of uh, Confucius. Okay, so uh, he was a disciple of Zhenzi, 
uh, and he wrote The Doctrine of the Mean, uh, so that's one of the other four books. Uh, and he's known as the narrative sage. Uh, and then Mencius was a disciple of Tzu, and he wrote the, the Book of Mencius. Okay, so those are the four books, uh, and he's known as the lesser sage. So, so up through here, uh, this is where it kind of ends in, in the, the, that lit line of patriarchs ends in China uh, at this point. Um, and let's see. Okay, uh, now, so now we go to continuing the, you can say, continuing this, this lineage uh, this, or this heritage of this Tao. Uh, it goes to India, okay, it goes to Buddhism. Uh, you'll notice here is the first one here is Mahakasyapa. Okay, so he would be number 19. Uh, but Buddha basically passed it on to Mahakasyapa. So, but Buddha is not here listed as one of the patriarchs. Uh, now, Buddha, you can say he, he's a special case. I mean, he's, he's special. Okay, so he's, he's the Buddha, <laughs> the Buddha. Okay, so, so uh, he's not a patriarch. Um, and so that uh, so that's that's a little bit different. That's why he's not listed. Uh, and so uh, so Buddha, remember, he has the post, the heavenly post. Okay, so he's in charge of all the sentient beings during this time. Now Buddha's time, Buddha, yeah, and basically Mahakasya is probably he's basically contemporary with uh, uh, basically the probably like. Zisu, Mencius, okay, that time, or actually, no, actually it would be, it would be uh, Zenzu, okay, so, so basically roughly uh, the time of Confucius or a little bit later, okay. Um, and then, so Ma Kasyapa, okay, so how did he get, he's one of the 10 major disciples of Sakyamuni Buddha, right, so it's around 400 BC, uh, so he became the first Zen, what we call the Zen patriarch, so these are kind of the starting the Zen tradition, if you will. Uh, and there was this thing called the flower sermon. Okay, so basically Buddha, you know, Buddha held a flower in front of his face and and how, <coughs> and smile, uh, and just holding it in front of his face. And and basically Mahakasyapa is the only one in the audience who, who kind of understood what Buddha meant by that, what, what it tr true meaning was. And so he broke into broad smile. Uh, and then Buddha also smiled and said, I possess the true Dharma eye, the marvelous mind of Nirvana, the true form of the formless, the subtle Dharma gate not found in words, but is a special transmission outside of the scriptures. This I entrust to Mahakasyapa. So at that point, at that moment, basically Buddha basically passed the mandate to Mahakasyapa. Okay, so that's when basically essentially Mahakasyapa becomes the, the patriarch. All right. Um, and then, okay, so at, uh, Ananda is also, uh, was also around when Buddha um, was around, was alive. It, Ananda is actually his, a cousin of his, of Buddha's, and he, but he was young. So he didn't really join, the, join uh, the monastic order until later on, uh, not, not from the beginning. Okay, so he wasn't from the beginning. But Ananda had a special skill, if you will, or, or talent. I mean, it's very, it was natural, I guess. Uh, he, he almost had like a, a photographic memory, so he could remember everything he heard, all right? So, so basically all the, uh, the sutras, the Buddha sutras, well, he didn't hear all of them in the beginning, right? Because only when, when he joined later on that he heard uh, what Buddha's teaching, but, uh, but he would remember everything, exactly what was said. Uh, now, the previous ones, that he did not hear himself. Uh, there are other people who kind of, uh, kind of remembered, and then they, uh, they recited it, and he remembered all af afterwards. But, uh, you know, so so he then became the next, the second uh, patriarch after the, after Ma Kasyapa. Um, uh, and uh, so let's see. Uh, okay, uh, let me see. Actually, do I have? Uh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, and then so, and then, the, and then the other ones. Okay, so afterwards, uh, you know, we're not going to go through all of these, but uh, uh, Ashagosa, let's see, basically, he was, he lived about 600 years after uh, Sakyamuni Buddha, you know, uh, entered Parinirvana. 
Um, now he he wrote well. It's regarded that he wrote this um, this treatise called uh, Awakening of Faith, which set forth the fundamental doctrines of Mahayana Buddhism. Okay, so that's kind of the the Buddhism that or the the practice that we're you know that's pretty common today. Okay, in in Buddhism, uh, and then Nagarjuna is also um, he lived around. Uh, let's see, 200, oh, okay, about 100 years afterwards, and basically he's uh, credited with rediscovering the Avantapasaka Sutra, uh, and basically teaches about the, the emptiness, uh, and, and basically the founder of the Mahayana branch of Buddhism, okay, so, um, and actually Buddha, you know, prophesized that, you know, he, he would be, um, See that uh, that that he would teach uh, this Mahayana, Mahayana uh, Buddhism a after he passed away. Okay, so all right. So, anyways, uh, and then so that's uh, so continuing on until there's 28 generations of patriarchs in in India. Okay, so in Buddhism, uh, Vasubha uh, Let me see. Uh, Vasubandhu, right, he's famous for teaching the consciousness only teachings. Okay, there's this, this Yogacara school, Yogacara school, the mind only consciousness school of, of Buddhism. Okay, uh, but Bodhidharma, okay, so Bodhidharma is probably more familiar uh, to people. Um, now, so this is what we typically call the 28 patriarchs of the West, right? <clears throat> now, what happened with Bodhidharma, so he's supposedly he's from southern India. Uh, and he, uh, at that time in India, uh, things weren't, I think it's around basically, uh, this is, um, I think around 600 or five, five to 600 eight, uh, CE. Okay. So, um, the year five, 600, uh, and then, <clears throat> so that at that time, India, he did not s see that India was had a successor, someone who could, you know, carry on the mandate in India. So, and he looked to the east, and he kind of saw this aura, <laughs> uh, this purple aura over over the east, uh, you know, towards China, basically. And so, so he traveled to the east, uh, and so basically, he became. So he's counted twice. So I don't know. He's kind of special. <laughs> he's he's counted. Uh, you know, he's the twenty eighth uh, patriarch in in India, and then he becomes the first patriarch. Uh, the first Zen patriarch in China, coming back to uh, and bringing Zen Buddhism to China. Okay, uh, so okay, um, so and then these uh, there's 18. Well, okay, there, there'll be there's 16 here, but then there are a total of 18. That uh, these are called considered the 18, the latter 18 patriarchs of the East, you know, in China. So, all right, so Bodhidharma. Uh, he was famous for establishing, well, okay, let me see, all right. So uh, before I talk about Bodhidharma uh, and these, the first six, basically, um, up until Hui Neng, which, you know, you know more, know about too. I, I mentioned, talked about him also last week. Uh, basically, between 54 and 55, uh, there's also a huge gap. It's almost a thousand years, <laughs> actually. So that's a big gap. Uh, historical gap uh, between these two. Um, so obviously, you know, w with basically the the patriarchate or the mandate was being passed from one to one, from Bodhidharma to Huineng, and then you know Huineng to even to this uh, uh, the next the number seven uh, and and eight, uh, and then but. Uh, here to number nine again. It's, it's one of those things where uh, during that time, uh, actually in China, the you can say that religious um, teachings were flourishing. Uh, you know, basically Buddhism, Taoism, uh, Confucianism, um, and you know, they a lot of them they they kind of combine uh, uh, all three, uh, and you know, so you can say it was it's kind of flourishing during that time, and so and that's during that time then you can say this mandate kind of went become hidden there was no need for it i guess uh but at the same time there were other masters uh who appeared so during that gap um who who was there basically you had uh for example the eight immortals 
that we know about. Um, we're also during that time, Jigong Living Buddha um, was a Song Dynasty monk, so he was during that time as well. Uh, and also the Seven Taoist Masters, they were all during that time period. So, um, so you know, there were other masters of the Tao, although they were not patriarchs, okay. Um, so, but anyways, for uh, then when uh, the number 55, uh, Huang De Hui, uh, uh, came around, um, you know, he, he got, again, you know, somehow he got the mandate, uh, and, uh, or, you know, either, you know, heaven just gave it to him, and then, you know, continued on from there. Okay, so, um, all right. Okay, so, uh, so Bodhidharma, uh, basically, um, he's known as the founder of Shaolin Kung Fu, okay, so, uh, this, um, there's some stories, um, with, uh, Bodhidharma. When he came to China, it was time of uh, Liang Wu Di, Liang Wu Emperor, Emperor Liang. Okay, uh, Wu, okay. Uh, and so, uh, basically, now this emperor, he was very supportive of Buddhism at the time. Um, so Buddhism already was in China. Okay, uh, and he he invite. You know, so Bud Bodhidharma thought maybe he can he can pass the mandate to Emperor Wu. Okay, but uh the emperor you know he said he, he tells bodhidharma said i've established monasteries you know printed sutras uh decreed the ordination of countless monks you know what merits have i attained from these deeds and bodhidharma answered you have no merit <laughs> and then it says oh, okay so so what then is the highest truth in buddhism and bodhidharma says emptiness nothing uh and then uh, emperor wu asks again you know who is it that faces me uh, and Bodhidharma says, I don't know. Uh, so, you know, Emperor Wu, he, he obviously, he, he was a little angry at, <laughs> at the answers that he got. Uh, he couldn't understand what Bodhidharma was trying to say. Uh, and so, <clears throat> so, but Bodhidharma then realized that, well, of course, this Emperor Wu, he's not, he's stuck on the forms. He, he's, he's looking for merits, you know, basically, uh, yes, what he did was good, but it's basically going to result in, uh, you can say good karma in the future, okay. Um, so, but anyways, he uh, the legend also has it that Bodhidharma kind of, uh, when he went down to the south and the Shaolin, um, he kind of uh, meditated in a cave facing a wall for nine years, okay, without, never left. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but anyways, okay, so now Hui Ke, who would be the next patriarch, uh, basically, the story goes is that, you know, he, he was also a very uh, uh, well-learned, uh, you know, cultivated uh, Dharma master. <clears throat> and, you know, he could speak to Dharma and uh, heaven, you know, flowers would drop, fall from the heaven. Uh, but, you know, he basically, he was also seeking the true Dharma uh, from, from Bodhidharma. And so he says, you know, uh, he asks... Uh, Bodhidharma said, may I hear the, the Dharma seal of the Buddhas? And Bodhidharma says, you know, the Dharma seal cannot be obtained from others. Uh, and Waka says, my mind is not at peace. Uh, and, uh, you know, ma the, the master says, you know, bring me your mind. I will set it at peace for you. Mm. And then Waka thought about it, tried to find his mind. He said, I can't find my mind anywhere. And then Bodhidharma says, I have already set your mind at peace. So basically, and then Huika kind of like became somewhat enlightened there uh, and realized, uh, understood. Uh, so, but um, <clears throat> so, but there, there's another story about you know he's cutting off his, he cut his he, he's kneeling outside the cave uh, waiting for uh, Bodhidharma and uh, and it's snowing uh, and. Uh, you know, then Bodhidharma asked, you know, what do, what do you want? I mean, and he says, you know, <clears throat> you know, he wants to know this Dharma. So, but yeah, supposedly either there's a misunderstanding or to show his sincerity, you know, he cut off his left arm uh, and uh, Bodhidharma then decided to take him in as, you know, and basically uh, take him on as, as a disciple. Uh, but, uh, but basically, you know, through except you know so starting basically maybe sometime in this red era that they were the the masters would make sure that you're qualified the next the successor is qualified and so they have to test them in some way all right uh okay so um let's see 
Okay, this time is kind of getting short here. So, all right. But anyways, there are lots of stories. There's actually a, uh, there's a movie, and it's, I guess it's an old movie um, uh, about Don't Buddy Dharma. I think, I think you can find it on, on, on YouTube. I think it's in Chinese with English, some English subtitles. So, uh, but, but it give you an idea of what's going on there. All right. Uh, and then, so the next, then you have the third patriarch, Sun Chan, Sun Chan. Okay, so he's supposedly the author of uh, what we call this Faith in Mind, this Faith in Mind inscription. Okay, um, I, I think I uh, read a couple of had, uh, verses from that uh, last week. Uh, okay, and then Tao Xing. Uh, now, he's, he was very young, uh, and he became enlightened when he was 14, actually. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, basically, he, he visited the, the third patriarch and says... Uh, May the master be so kind as to teach me the way to liberation. And the master said, who has bound you? And he says, no one has bound me. Then why are you seeking liberation? Uh, and then when he heard that, he became enlightened. And so, so, so basically it's, it's similar. It's similar, kind of very similar. This is kind of very, what we typically, we say it's very typical Zen. Okay, so, um, and basically this is all about instant enlightenment. Okay, this is this, this Zen, these, these, Zen patriarchs, uh, their teaching is basically about instant enlightenment. Okay, uh, okay, and then Hongren, who's then the the okay, so later on, then Daoxing becomes the the next the fourth patriarch. And Hongren, uh, now the story goes that he <laughs> he was an old man. He was a he was like a, a Taoist priest or something <clears throat> when he met Daoxing, uh, and he he asked Daoxing for you know to to give him the the, the true Dharma. Uh, and but Dao Xing said, "Well, you, you're kind of old, uh, and you know, if you, even if I gave it to you, you know, you wouldn't be able. To, I mean, how long were you going to live to be able to spread the teachings, right? Because so they also have not just, <clears throat> you know, to be able to get that teaching themselves, but to spread that teaching. Okay, so that's part of their mandate. Um, and so he says, "Oh, okay, all right. So so basically, Dao Xing told him, said, well, you know." Why don't you come back in your next life, uh, and I'll be waiting for you. Okay, so th this is the story. It goes like this, and then so so he says, okay. So basically, Hong Lun, or in his previous life, uh, he meets this woman, um, this young woman uh, by the river washing clothes, and and as he asks if you know he can go stay at her home, uh, and then she you know she agrees, whatever, uh, and then. Uh, and then when she went home, uh, it was found that she was pregnant. So the father uh, was very furious and kicked her out. Uh, and then so she had to go out, um, kind of uh, make make a living for on her own. Uh, eventually, she gave birth. Uh, so this is kind of, I guess, a, 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 a <laughs> another kind of a virgin birth kind of thing. Uh, gave birth, and then uh, uh, they had, you know, it was very difficult. And she actually kind of didn't want to keep the child. The baby, and then later on, you know, she rediscovered the baby at the river, uh, and you know, decided to keep him and then raise him and all that. Uh, eventually, uh, 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 Dao Xing came across this boy, okay, as he grew up a little bit more, uh, and basically uh, said, "Let's see." Uh, you know, he says, and he asked the boy, you know, what's your family name? The boy says, you know, I have a name, but it's not, it's not an ordinary name. And he says, oh, what's the name? It's, it's called Buddha Nature. <laughs> so, uh, and the master says, yeah, you don't have a name? He says, no, because it's, it is empty in nature. So Dao Xing, uh, he recognized that, wow, this, this, this boy is special. Um, so basically, he asked the mother if he can take him in as become a monk, and she agreed. And so basically... Uh, he kind of continued to raise him and teach him, and he became the fifth patriarch. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have to... Uh, so, but sixth patriarch, okay, he's very well known. Uh, now, of these other patriarchs, basically, besides the sutras that Buddha left behind, um, some of the other patriarchs uh, they, in India, they, they, they left behind some like commentaries on, on the sutras, things like that. Uh, but... Huineng is the only other patriarch that has a has a sutras, okay, that has left behind a sutra. Um, and so that's well known as the Platform Sutra. Uh, 
that we we read okay so but he was he was poor and illiterate so it doesn't you know being a patriarch doesn't mean that you have to be well learned uh, just like the other the other patriarchs uh they they were very well versed in in the sutras but mm, Hui Neng, he was poor and illiterate okay but when he heard the diamond sutra he he he, he kind of became enlightened so uh now so he's basically established the sudden enlightenment school of buddhism right <clears throat> now he was the last okay so from bodhidharma uh passing the the mandate to um uh basically hui ke uh basically he used the the robe and the alms bowl to indicate you know to show that that person had the mandate right so basically they did that until the sixth patriarch okay so but he would be the last one uh to to do that uh after that because basically the fifth patriarch told him not to do it any to pass it on anymore and so uh so that you can say that maybe that's also a, a sign because this at this point you can say this is still in buddhism and buddhism in traditional in in buddhism they'll recognize Wei Neng, the sixth patriarch as one of their patriarchs but then after that it kind of it can deviate okay uh, some say it's uh, Sen Shu, which is the other, uh, well, uh, the, I mean, in terms of what comes after, who comes after, um, there's, uh, they say, you know, Yong Jia, maybe, you know, another uh, of these masters. But um, these these people are, you can say they can be enlightened, but they, uh, but these others may not have that, don't have that mandate. Okay, so, uh, but anyways, this is, yeah, you can say the last of, the the ma where last time where the Tao this mandate is in Buddhism all right so after that it leaves Buddhism all right so uh, so we're gonna skip all the way to now the white era uh, which um, starts basically in the early 20th century um, now the mandate is with the commoners so it's not even with these teachers or religious uh, uh, people uh, it's just common people and the Maitreya Buddha has the heavenly post. Okay, and the great calamity now is the wind. There's 81. I mean, it's not just wind, but it's, <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, basically, there are only two generations here. So Lu Zhongyi and then Zhang Tianran and Sun Su Zhen. Okay, so these are 63 and 64. So basically, this is the, the total. There's only, there's 18, 28, 18, which is 64, 64, right? 64 hexagrams of the, uh, uh, of the Yi Jing, right? In the uh, and so that's that's all there is. So that's complete. Uh, there, there, there would be no more. Okay. So, so at this point, these are the last patriarchs um, that we know of. And <clears throat> so the seventeenth patriarch. Okay. Again, they're they're commoners, so they're not even a member of any religious order or practice. Uh, in this case, he was appointed by God or Lamu. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, although you know the. You know, he, he, he received the Tao from the 16th Patriarch, but and the 16th Patriarch wanted to choose his successor, but didn't really know who it was, who, who to pass it on to, uh, even though he, he had gotten a lot of hints um, from God, actually, through sand writings, things like that. OK, but but anyways, he never he never chose him. Uh, he never passed it on. And so this uh, this this decree, if you will, came down from God. OK, so. Uh, so he had the he, he was a patriarch from 1905 to 1925. Uh, so this we kind of know for sure, uh, and he's actually turns out to be incarnation of Maitreya Buddha. All right, uh, and okay. So now also again, he did not pass it on to the to the next uh, patriarch uh, because you'll see there's a gap. So 1925 and then 1930 is when the the, the next generation appeared, the patriarch appeared, although they were also um you know uh his basically followers of of the 17th patriarch at the time uh but you know there were tests again there there are also there's always tests and uh these actually these two they they passed the test uh there's this meat bun test you know there's whatever uh we won't go into that since i'm already out of time here <laughs> but uh basically you know so there so so this is also a time when you have two uh, at the people at the same time having the having the mandate one, but this is the first time you have a a, a female, uh, so we call the matriarch. Uh, now, 
Zhang Tianran, the or we call him Su Zun, okay, revered teacher, uh, is, was patriarch. It was only for 17 years, from 1930 to 1947. Uh, he's the incarnation of Qigong Living Buddha, okay. Uh, and then the matriarch uh, ha, uh, lived longer, right, to, to 1975. And she's the incarnation of Yahweh Bodhisattva. And again, all these, uh, the patriarchs, they all also had, um, you know, they, they've, they basically, this, this mandate is something that they had to, you know, protect with their, guard with their lives, okay? And, and they had to make sure that it gets uh, passed on. Although in some cases, you know, they didn't, they didn't really uh, do that. But uh, uh, because, you know, it's all part of this mission, that this responsibility that they have as a patriarch. Okay, and then so these two also hold the Tao mandate in white ear. So, so in the white ear, it makes a lot more sense. In the red ear, there was also um, where the, the Tao was kind of propagated. So some of these patriarchs, they would, uh, you know, pass, you can say pass the Tao. We're talking about passing the Tao as opposed to the mandate, okay, uh, to, to people. Um, and those people, they, they were enlightened. Um, and today, of course, it's everyone, you know, anyone who has that affinity can receive the Tao. Okay, so, uh, okay, so, but after, okay, so you notice that that's the last patriarch, or the matriarch, uh, left in 1975. So since then, uh, where's the mandate? Well, okay, uh, the followers of the patriarch and matriarchs, okay, so you have the grand predecessor we talk about. Uh, he was a follower. Um, and... So, uh, you know, basically what happened was God, again, Lamu God, uh, basically said, you know, told the grand predecessor that he has to temporarily take on um, this mandate, okay? So he's kind of, he's not a, he's not a patriarch, but um, God said that you're going to temporarily hold this mandate uh, and... Um, so he did until his passing in 1995, uh, and then the predecessors. Okay, so after that we haven't we didn't hear anything, but um, you know, being being, you know, having that authority, having that mandate means he can also say, okay, so the predecessors are basically his followers. Okay, so under him, uh, that some of his predecessors, he 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 can say, well, you have uh, authority to pass on certain mandates, okay, so a certain number of mandates. Uh, so that's, that's been done, but now we, we're, you know, we're kind of, uh, we don't have any more predecessors anymore under our grand predecessor, okay? There, there are other grand predecessors, perhaps, and other predecessors, but, but in our line uh, lineage, there are no more. Uh, so now the transmitting masters, they get their mandate from, from them, okay? So uh, so today there is, um, there's still, there's now kind of like a committee, a three, or there's three uh, of uh, the uh, senior transmitters who, uh, and I don't know, they, they actually ask God <laughs> to, uh, to see if they can continue, um, uh, and, and apparently they, they could. So, so anyways, this, again, this is not something that uh, uh, is something that for humans, for, to necessarily decide, say, oh, did, is, do, do we still have this mandate or not? Uh, as long as we have these transmitting masters, um, we can still propagate the Tao. Uh, but the Tao, again, remember, we're, we're in this period where um, it seems like uh, there's really not that much time. We're on borrowed time, okay? So uh, there's really not that much time left um, for this, this propagation of Tao and this mandate, okay? Uh, so, uh, okay, but yeah, I need to wrap up here. All right, so uh, I, I just wanted to mention that in the Ten Great Vows, right, um, there are two vows that relate to this. Basically, it says, if I deceive, deceive the teachers and disclaim patriarchs, um, so, you know, realize that this Tao came to us uh, over thousands of years, and, and, and these, through the lives of these patriarchs, uh, and we should not um, you know, we, we, we should definitely revere them, revere that, and, and also, you know, uh, cherish the fact that, yeah, we, we have this Tao uh, because of them, right? So also, you know, re realizing that there's this golden thread, that we should not leave this golden thread, okay? Um, so, 
uh, and also if I despise the predecessors. You know, we, we have to respect all of those who came before us, even if they're illiterate, like Six Patriarch. Um, um, you know, so uh, it, it has nothing to do with, you know, how much knowledge, uh, learning that we have. Uh, it's more about wisdom and virtue. Okay, so that's something. So again, these are two of the vows that we made when we received the Tao. So, all right, so conclusion, basically Tao exists in the world to guide and save sentient beings, right? It's said that the Tao descends when there is calamity uh, to, to save people, right? Uh, and then yeah, Tao exists in the world having this mandate from heaven. So again, this is not something that humans decide to, that, there's this, that we can continue to mandate, all right? Uh, the Tao lineage has an enduring heritage, even though there are gaps, again, uh, this is basically the point is that the Tao, you know, that we're getting today, that we have today did not just suddenly appear today or, you know, recently or even a hundred years ago. I mean, it's, it's, it was already around thousands for thousands of years. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. And so, and then the patriarchs, they carried on the mandate for the mission. Basically the ultimate mission is what, what was the purpose of, uh, this lineage, this, of this, all the uh, carrying on this mandate uh, from generation to generation is to serve the purpose of this universal salvation and the realization of Maitreya's vow, right? So, uh, so we are now in that time period, the white era, where this can happen, and uh, you know this is heaven's will. Uh, basically, this is heaven's will, and it will happen. Uh, the question is, how will it happen? Uh, it depends on us, right? Uh, whether we uh, we learn, you know, if sentient beings learn to, people learn to cultivate and, and find their true nature, the Buddha nature, and cultivate, follow their conscience, uh, then things will, uh, then that paradise will come more easily. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of uh, calamities, um, 81 calamities during the white era. Uh, so pan this pandemic is definitely one of them. Okay, so there, there's going to be more. Um, and, <clears throat> and so depending on uh, what people do, you know, how people's hearts, their hearts and minds are, uh, you know, things can either get better or worse, right? So we, we pray for the, be for the best, uh, and so our duty, our responsibility is to cultivate well ourselves, to learn more about this Tao, uh, and to try to uh, reach out and guide other uh, sentient beings, other people, to this path. Uh, of enlightenment. Okay, so um, again, I'm sorry for the uh, going over time here. Uh, eh, if I had said anything wrong uh, or not uh, uh, not well, uh, and not completely, I asked the Buddhas for forgiveness and also the uh, corrections from uh, uh, transmitting masters and lectures. Uh, thank you, and may the Tao be with you. All right.